Uh, first of all, what do you think of the new belt that's sitting there in front of you? Uh, it's dope. You know, I told you guys, it kind of reminds me of Power Ranger. I, hope, I heard Power Rangers is doing a reboot. If you're looking for a great ranger, how's uh, your boy ready for takeover uh, Hollywood too? But uh, you know, like I said, you know, it's uh, I got a soul stone. I got one on here already. I don't know if it's Frankie's or Brian's, but it's on there, so it's cool. Very nice. Uh, how'd you feel about your performance tonight? I felt good. I felt good. I felt real good. You know, I, I got to find myself early in that fight. Um, I told, uh, you know, I, people. I kept hearing people saying that his wrestling was gonna be too much. I kept people hearing saying that his pressure on me was gonna be too much. So I wanted to go five rounds and remind everybody that uh, the Bless Express is on the move. Bless Sarah has did in full effect, and uh, that's all we did. You mentioned wanting to go five rounds. I, mean, I imagine if you had the chance to finish it, you probably would have. But it seemed pretty close at the end of that third round, and then he kind of took you down like, right at the end. That was the one take that you got. Is that the biggest opportunity you saw to finish the fight? I always want to finish the fight. I always trying to finish the fight, but Frankie is a legend, guys. He's a legend, you know. He's, he's the dude. He's been in there with the best of them, and he is one of the best. And, uh, you know, I just couldn't find the shots. I couldn't land the shots. And, and uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I felt great. Yeah, I mean, what does it mean to you? You praised him so much that you got to this fight. It was all respect afterwards. What does it mean to have his name on your resume? It means a lot. You know, without the guys like Frankie Edgar, uh, you wouldn't have guys like me. Frankie Edgar was the inspiration. You know, Drake said, uh, uh, train before, <laughs> train to your idols become your rivals. You know, I'm here, and um, he's he's a beast. You know, you can't take nothing away from Frankie. He's still a legend. He's been in top five forever in two different weight classes. In a weight class where he was very undersized, boy looked kind of big today though. But uh, but it was super fun. You know, it was super fun. You know, uh, like I said, I'm trying to be the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Not not uh, not the best featherweight in the world. I'm trying to be the best pound for pound fighter in the world. And uh, Frankie's one of one of the guys to to help me one step towards that goal. Yeah, you spent 14 rounds in there since December, uh, which is a lot of cage time. There's all, all this talk about potentially fighting Volkanovski in Australia, the big stadium show, October. Does that just, generally speaking, feel too soon for you, considering how much you fought of late, or could you possibly see yourself doing that? Yeah, we see what happens, you know. Like, I look fine, I look great, but you know, I owe it to my team, I owe it to uh, my coaches. But we gotta get medical testing, you know. Like you said, I I, uh, I fought three title fights in seven months. I think it's seven and a half months, something like that. And uh, you know, I want to fight one more time this year, but we gotta go take all the right tests and see, and and we we'll go from there. Just last thing for me, uh, Dana was in here, and he got asked questions about you potentially going to 55 again in the future, and he more or less said the door is closed. Like I asked him maybe if he got more time, because I know it was a pretty short camp for Dustin to bulk up, and he said, you know. Doesn't matter how much time you get, he's not interested in that. Uh, what, what do you just make of that? Dana changes mind every day. Tomorrow he might be like, hey, Max, we need a heavyweight fight. So uh, I don't know. You know, Dana's mind is all over the place. You know, I gotta respect the boss, but you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, I, I know uh, I know if an opportunity come up there and they come calling, you know, we won't shy away. Max is your uh, left over here. Uh, congrats on, on the win. Uh, it seems like there, there's a pretty notable pattern in, in some of your fights recently where First couple rounds might be kind of close, and then third round is really when you, when you click and you start to pull away. What is it about uh, about you that allows you to do that? I just gotta get, you know, like a train. I just gotta get my engine rolling, the choo-choo train, and once, once it's rolling, it's hard to stop, you know? So I just gotta get in there and figure it out, you know? Everybody's different. I, you know, like, I, I don't have, I, we have guys to mimic Frankie, but it's not Frankie, you know? And, uh, when I get in there, I try to figure it out, find uh, find out what we've been working and see what's working and then turn it out from there. You landed a, a few big uppercuts in the fight and there were two really big ones in the third round that kind of uh, allowed you to pull away and I think one out that was the mouthpiece uh, or taking him with that, with that same uppercut. Is that what you guys saw like, on film that you think would be vulnerable to that? Uh, we, saw, we saw a bunch of things, you know, we saw a bunch of things and uh, uppercut was just landing. It was working, you know, and uh, we had a lot of other things that we actually practiced more, but the uppercut just landed. I was like, hey, if he's not going to move his head, if he's moving his head a certain way, I'll just keep doing it, and uh, it was working. I know that uh, you don't want to talk about uh, being better featherweight than Jose Aldo, but you do, have, you do have one record that you tied today, 13 uh, featherweight wins in a row, and it's uh, tied with John Jones, Anderson Silva, and Demetrius Johnson as the most uh, wins in a row in a, in a division. Uh, what, what is your what is your reaction to that? I'm just trying to be a legend. I'm just trying to be the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, and um, 
that's the names that I gotta be up there with, you know, and uh, that's respect. So, like I said, you know, like all this goat talk and whatever, that uh, doesn't affect me, you know, when it's, when it's all said and done, I can sit back and relax and, uh, and I always stood the man. He still got the most wins, he got the most title defenses, and, and so on and so on. So, until I beat those records, then uh, maybe I can be in that conversation. Last thing for me, I heard uh, you ran into Alexander Volkanovsky in the elevator um, at the hotel this yeah. week. Uh, what was that? What was that uh, conversation like? And, and what do you think about him as the future opponent? It was cool, you know. It was me and him, and then uh, and the manager and was like, "Well, this ain't awkward." And then we both laughed, and, and it's just cool, you know. He's a nice guy. He's a fighter. You know, he's a respectful guy, and um, we didn't say nothing. You know, it was like whatever. And saw him, and then he got off and said, hey, "Have a nice day. Have a nice day." We went on our way. Everything okay, Rush? You good? Very much. This guy is tired. I don't know what is going on. Nice. Max, right here. Back in February, uh, when I spoke with Israel Adesanya, he said that he fought Anderson Silva. He had watched him so much throughout his career that he knew what was coming when they fought. Uh, you were pretty adamant that you've been watching Frankie for a long time. I'm curious if anything similar uh, when you were fighting him played through your mind. Yeah, you know, he, he, he was definitely trying some stuff that I usually see him throw, you know, that, that running, that, 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 that running single, that running single leg is, <laughs> that's Frank Yeager, you watch a highlight, you see a bunch of people get taken down with that, so, when he's doing that, I was like, wow, Frank is trying it on me, you know, that's pretty cool, but, uh, yeah, what's the time, we, uh, we watched a lot of tape, I watched a lot of tape, and there's a lot of times when we're in there, and it just clip back, like, oh, I remember this way, he was doing this, and he was doing it, so, it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, did you call out Daniel Cormier again after your fight? Time. Every time I call out Daniel Cormier right now, you better hope, Steve Bader, hope for that is not on the plan. You better hope that DC, uh, that Steve Bader make that walk. Or you're going to fight a Hawaiian that's probably going to step in there around like 205 pounds, that's ready to take your belt. And that number one pound for pound, belt, uh, pound, for pound fighter in the world. Well, what's the beef? I mean, I saw you kind of teasing him when you had that press conference. You I don't know. You, did you guys see the Twitter? Like everybody was like saying, "Oh my gosh, he's limping. Max is limping. Fighters and stuff." DC was like, "That's Max's swag." He's like, "He's not being cool. He's clowning me." I don't, I don't like that type of beef. The Twitter figures, uh, trigger figures turn to Twitter figures. DC, come see me. <laughs> uh, not that I love for the guy. I love DC, man. I love that guy. He's a legend. Okay, got Max. Congratulations. Uh, first of all, uh, it's been over three years since you went to a decision in the featherweight division. So, what is it about Frankie or tonight that took you the distance like that? Like I said, you know, Frankie's a legend. He's a man, you know, and um, all I kept hearing was I wasn't going to be able to handle Frankie's pace. I wasn't going to be able to handle his wrestling. This, I fought no one like Frankie before. So, I had my plan in my mind. I wanted to go out there and show everybody why I was the best in the world and why. Bless the Express and the Bless Errors and stood in full effect. So I went out there, controlled the fight, and showed everybody, look, I don't have to be in these wars and this stuff. You know, it's fun sometimes, but sometimes, you know, not looking like the guy from Goonie is great, great too. So we got some business stuff. <laughs> we got some business stuff to do after this fight, and uh, I couldn't be too too beaten up. You know, the last, the last fight I had this big scar on my face, and yeah, I, I don't like it. Rush teases me all the time, so it's kind of horrible. Uh, Dana was in here a few minutes ago. Uh, I asked him how close we are to UFC Hawaii, and he gave me a short answer, not at all. Do you know anything about that or why he said that? You know, yeah, I, I know because it's it's not a UFC thing, you know, it's a Hawaii thing. It's a, it is a Hawaii thing. Like, look, like, <laughs> you got guys like Abu Dhabi building. They're building the stadium for UFC to come. These guys are building them, you know, like. Like they, you, uh, you see Hawaii, 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 the state, whatever. They don't want it that bad. They don't want it. Abu Dhabi is building a stadium as we speak right now for a fight, you know. And we have a stadium there, so I just think it's a, it, it's one of those things that Hawaii just don't want it that bad. Do you take exception to that as a star from Hawaii in the face of Hawaii? You, you think I do? I'm, <laughs> I'm asking I'm, you. I don't have a problem. I, I want to fight at home. I want every 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 guy's dream is to fight at home. You know, I want to fight at home in front of my people and. Uh, you know, thank God, uh, Canada uh, took your boy as the honorary captain. So I'm here, GSP, move over. Uh, next time I go to T Dot City to uh, main event, I'm gonna tie. I'm gonna tie. I'm gonna tie. I'm gonna tie with him. I think it's five. Yeah, five. Yeah, you told me. Mike told me. It's it's he only uh, headlined five uh, Canadian cars, so I might catch up with him. So yeah. And finally, for me, uh, if it's okay with you, Max, can we get a brief uh, breakdown how Rush Mini Bless feels about your performance tonight? Yeah, how you feel about how, how did Daddy look good tonight? 
Pretty good. Pretty good? What, 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 what was pretty good? He punches. Oh, just pretty good. I'm kind of mad. He's, he's not getting chocolate wasted tonight, guys. I am. I'm taking all the goodies that you guys saw on Embedded. Uh, sort of along those same lines, you know, I'm sure after the loss to Dustin, you kind of have to talk to Rush about, you know, coming back from the loss. Now that you actually have come back from the loss, and you finish that, how do you kind of add, can you add on, what can you add on to that lesson? It's, like I said, a true champion is a, is a guy who can get knocked back down and get right back up the reins and keep chugging along, you know. Uh, all these guys, everybody, you, you don't really see someone's character until they get tested. If someone is great all the time and that's all they know, and they've never ever had failure, then you don't know, you really don't know how great they are. You know, they gotta run into these problems to find out how great and to find themselves, and uh, this is one of those lessons. And uh, should the Australia card, uh, should that, you know, not happen, or I mean, you don't fight at that card, uh, how determined are you to fight again, at least get in one more before the end of the year? Yeah, we see what happens, you know, like, like I just told you guys, you know, it's, I, I, gotta, I gotta go with my team, I gotta talk, and I, I, I know how bad I wanna fight, at home, you know, and I don't want to take that away from the guy. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just got to go see the doctors, you know, and, and get checked up and we we'll go from there, you know. At the, at the end of the day, the stadium and stuff is cool, but I definitely want to fight uh, before the end of the year for sure. You know, uh, UFC had this habit of putting me the first week of December. You know, hopefully if I get medically cleared and everything and uh, I'm good to go by December, uh, I can get that first week because I've been max week for the last three years, I think. So don't be changing up on me now, because only get only get one card. <laughs> Keep that same energy, you see. Oh. <laughs> oh. Max, just following up on that, I know you've wanted to be on like a you know New Year's card or international fighting card. It didn't pan out last year, but those last pay per views, it's going to be a stadium show in October, Madison Square Garden, New York, and the December pay per view. Will you be satisfied if you're on one of those events? Yeah, we see, you know, we see, you know, New, New York sounds cool, like I said, like you guys said, with Bugs and Aki uh, and, and Ozzy, it sounds cool, so, we see, yeah, this, I gotta go check with the doctors, get checked, and uh, go from there. You have your uh, peanut butter and cocoa puffs in? Oh, we got, no, I didn't have, we about to have some, about to have some, man, you're looking at me like, no, you're not, but yes, I am, I'll fight you. Alright, go get it. Thank you. Hey, Max. Um, and you, you mentioned going to see the doctors um, and get medically tested. That's something we don't really hear fighters talk about that much. Is this something you've always done, or was this something that started after you had to put out that fight with Brian for the unknown reasons? Uh, yeah, it's something that, uh, that that you just gotta learn. You know, one of those things that we get better and you get better, and things like that happen. So we've been. You know, I got I got this little mini me right here. I try not, I'm trying to be able to walk and talk and, and be fine, you know, we had some tragedies that happened, not in our sport, but in combat sports this past week, that's, that's pretty sad, and I, I, we want to stay on, on top of it. My manager, my team, they all push me to go to the doctors whenever something, like, I can be telling them, like, oh my gosh, my, my hand is sore, they like, get, I, I get texts, I, I tell one of the coaches, oh, my hand is hurt, I get a text by my manager 10 minutes later, hey, look, Check your Google Calendar. You gotta, you, you gotta go to the doctors right now. I'm like, what? What is going on? Like, I can't, like, you know what I mean? But these guys, these guys look out for the best of me, and that's why I love them. And uh, I'm trying to stay around for a long time. You know, not, not, not a good time, a long time. So actually, mentioning those tragedies we had in boxing, um, you talk about the clip of you walking in tonight. Conor McGregor actually retweeted it and said, "When you've heard about those tragedies, the walk takes on a different meaning." I mean, obviously, you were just walking into the arena, but can you understand what he means by that? No, it was happening in boxing recently. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. You know, it's crazy. It's uh, I understand that a lot. You know, it's just it's something that that a fighter know, only a fighter know. You know, and uh, this sport is crazy. This sport is crazy. You know, we 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 always like me and my uh, me and my coach, me and one of my head coach, we always joke around about it, but. The, the last meal before I fight all the time, he say, eat whatever you want, this might be your last meal. You know what I mean? Like, that's the way we approach it, because we're just warriors and stuff, but we, we don't wish that, but that's what we say, you know, that's this mindset, and you never know, you know, you, you really never know. This world is crazy, this sport is crazy, and uh, it, it's just insane, and you gotta, you gotta feel all, you know, nothing but love and prayers to that family that's enduring right now, actually the two families, so, you know, prayers out to them. Just 
I'll go put my chips with the dip. <laughs> Thank you guys.